Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Warshay. I'm the executive director of the Nelson Center for Entrepreneurship. And I have learned over this past year when all the Nelson Center's events have transitioned uh, very smoothly, thanks to Abby and Liz and Jonas and our uh, Nelson Center staff online, that it's not safe to say good afternoon, because for some of you, I know it's good morning. Um, if you're in parts of the world where it's morning and even evening and uh, af afternoon, certainly for people in Rhode Island. So wherever you are, and uh, no matter what time it is, I'm really excited to welcome you here. Uh, I always start every event at the Nelson Center with a uh, question that many of you are familiar with, but just in case, uh, I wanted to ask whether this is the first event for anybody, the first Nelson event that anybody is attending. Just raise your hand, either virtually or actually. And I see some. Yeah, I, I, I always love that. And um, I ask that question because we are constantly getting uh, an influx of new members of our community. As we said at the senior send off, uh, our community feels like a Nelson family. And so we welcome you and hope that this will be the first of many events that you'll attend. As I was just saying, I want to acknowledge that we have many of you who are tuning in from all sorts of different locations, the UK, uh, several of you from Pakistan, and we welcome you because we know you're here to cheer on Hamza, from India, Canada, um, all throughout the US, including California, Texas, Arizona, and, and elsewhere, uh, New York, I see some people who are from New York, and we even have one person who's tuning in from an airplane. And uh, we really appreciate the effort that VET has gone to to uh, join us from up in the air. Uh, one of the most wonderful parts about this Hazeltine Mentorship Award event is that I get to do something that I always love to do, and I hope I do it enough throughout the year. Uh, but the purpose of this event is to say thank you. Thank you to two special people who uh, deserve our recognition, but also to weave in some thank yous to many of the others of you who are tuning in. I want to acknowledge Stephen Siegel and Charlie Kroll for originally funding this initiative, even thinking it up uh, a whole bunch of years ago. And then to the other donors who've contributed over the years, who include um, Michael Alphon, Thorne Sparkman, Peter Damon, Jeffrey Weiss, Chuck Bousseau, and, and I think a few others who uh, even recently have, have uh, stepped up to fund this initiative, re recognizing how important it is. I, of course, want to welcome and thank the namesake of this event, uh, Barrett Hazeltine himself. Uh, and I want to acknowledge past recipients uh, who are here, and I hope I don't leave anybody out, but those include Don Stanford, Jen Nazarino, Jessica Kim. Oh, I see Jen is holding up her bobblehead. How nice. Um, Jason Harry. And if I've missed anybody, please let me know that you're here last minute because I think I had the full list, but really appreciate the continued uh, commitment that you all have after you've received this award. Pat McHugh is here. And then we have lots of alumni mentors who also deserve our recognition. And again, I, I run the risk of not including everybody, but some of the ones I saw on the list include David Fan, Peter Iliopoulos, Stephen Siegel himself, I see Liz Hamburg here, Bob Place, MCK, uh, Annette Tanti, Eli Wolf, David Copans, Rosie uh, Mangerati, and Steve Gable. Uh, and again, I apologize if I missed anybody. I suspect there's others of you who are online here who also deserve our thanks and recognition. And that is all to say that even if you're not a recipient of the Hazeltine Mentorship Award, we really appreciate all that you do to help us do our work. I mean, I'm spotlit right now, and you are looking at 25% of the Nelson Center full-time staff. And so we couldn't possibly do everything we do without the contribution, engagement, um, assistance, generosity of all of you who are on with us today. It's a hallmark, I think, of our Nelson Center that we have such a broad and growing, as I said before, community slash family. So thank you to everybody. We now have over 500 of you who have signed up to be roll up your sleeves, to be mentors, to serve on selection committees, to be, to be uh, BVP judges, 
and to help us in all sorts of ways, speaking, teaching, um, doing roundtables. And so again, thank you. That's again, the theme that you're gonna hear throughout um, this afternoon. Uh, the last thing I'll say is, although this is actually now the second time we are doing it, doing the, the uh, Hazeltine Mentorship Awards remotely, we look forward to being back in that structure, which is depicted two-dimensionally behind me uh, in the fall. And so um, from now until then, you know, there's a summer semester, we're running B-Lab Accelerator. There's a lot of programming that's gonna be happening between now and the time we're back in the building. And we encourage you all to participate. You've seen now by virtue of your attendance today that it's actually quite straightforward to, um, to just hit a link and you're online. I remember a year ago when we did this event back then, and I can see Liz smiling. It was really one of our very first events that we were doing on this new platform, this thing called Zoom. And I think we uh, didn't even expect how well it would go. We thought we would, um, of course, ceremoniously acknowledge Jen and Don as we did. They would say a few words. And then I was very tempted to hit the leave button, be, uh, the end meeting button even, because I thought, okay, that's the event. And very quickly uh, emerged a, a really wonderful reflection of this community that people started chatting and talking and acknowledging each other. And so um, I'm not putting pressure on anybody, but after the more formal part of the program, if you're interested, stick around and we could even leverage the breakout room functionality that uh, we're all familiar with now. Uh, no pressure. And if that doesn't work for people and it's nice outside where you are and you want to get outside, that's cool. But uh, feel free to stick around and acknowledge other people who are here besides the uh, award recipients. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get the formal part of the uh, show underway. Uh, and I'm going to do that by introducing uh, the student speaker who's going to introduce our first awardee, and that is Haley Hoffman Smith, uh, an alumna from class of 18. And it's such a joy to be able to introduce Haley because Haley was one of my students. And I remember the very first minute I met her when she very eagerly showed up to the first day of my entrepreneurial process course in Wilson 301. I remember distinctly you were sitting in the very first row. And it turned out that I think it was the very first course that you ever even attended at Brown. And I was so honored that that was the case. And, and uh, I sort of knew there was a spark in Haley and she participated very actively in that first r, &R case study. I thought that is somebody who is gonna make her mark uh, while at Brown. She's gonna contribute uh, tremendously to the Nelson Center. And, uh, and I think beyond Brown, she's going to really make her mark on the world and in particular, the entrepreneurial world. And I guess I had a pretty good hunch because Haley had, has done that. And the connections that I'm sure she's going to mention in terms of the impact that uh, Hamza has had on her uh, are why we chose her to introduce Hamza. So Haley, such a wonderful feeling to be able to introduce one of my former students, star students, a star now beyond Brown, and uh, I'll give you the floor right now. Thank you, Danny. That was so sweet. And okay, Hamza, first of all, I'm sending you a big virtual hug. I'm so proud of you, excited for you. And my story with Hamza starts my junior year of college. So for background, I had transferred to Brown. So I only had my junior and my senior year there. So when Danny references that I had my first, he was my first class, it's the truth, fall of my junior year. First semester I was with him and I realized very quickly that I wanted to study something at the intersection of gender studies, which was my concentration with entrepreneurship based off the experiences that I'd had. So I chose to study female self-agency and entrepreneurship and venture capital. So it's bringing in some socio-political theory there. Uh, so I was very clear on a, on a niche and I knew I wanted to do independent studies to bring that concentration to life and also incorporate my work with the Nelson Center because they were so supportive for every idea that I came up with into my actual academic work, like what I was actually getting academic credit for. So I had thought about this idea of starting an incubator on campus for female identifying students to help bring their ideas from concept to reality. I remember I went to Liz and she said, yes, let's do this. <laughs> and I wanted to turn that entire process of creating the curriculum and then also 
being a witness to female self-agency in the classroom environment or the incubator environment into something that I was studying. So my friend, Mark, Matt, sorry, Matt DeMarcantonio, Matt, Mark DeMarcantonio, just kidding, uh, introduced me to Hamza. He said, there's a new advisor. I think you'd really like him. I remember I was in Halal and I went in and I met Hamza and we instantly hit it off. And I told him, okay, here's my idea. Here's what I'm passionate about. And here's what I'd like to study. And he said, yeah, let's do it. And it was so encouraging to have that support. I worked with him all of my senior year and it was this beautiful balance between me as a very independent student who was really taking my academic journey into my hands to have his unwavering support and anything that I wanted to do or study or any way that I wanted to pursue it within the ind independent study, he really was 100% for. But he also knew when to challenge me and when to push me, which is very special in particular. And we really created that dynamic with each other around when he knew that there was something more I needed to uncover in my research, whether that was in the classroom or in what I was actually studying in terms of literature. And he just had this endless pool of resources of literature for me to study that could really abed and aid in what I was doing in the classroom. So a friendship formed alongside a dear mentorship. And honestly, Holmes is a huge reason I am who I am today. He helped me during the leadership experience that I had at Brown and was an integral part of all of it. So I'm forever thankful. And right when I got the email that he received this award, I was so, I, I was like, of course, I mean, <laughs> obvious, but also just so proud of you, Hamza, and so well-deserved because you truly were a hallmark of my experience at Brown and the person that I am today, because we know that the impacts that we have on campus and in our academic space go so beyond just being a college student. So I can really say that I owe that to you. Thank you so much, Haley. Uh, I'm going to ask Hamza if you would say a few words. Great. Uh, Haley, thank you so much uh, for those wonderful remarks. One of the things you know about me is that I am seldom speechless. I always have something to say, but this is one of those moments that I uh, that that I do find myself at a loss to words. Uh, for words, Haley, I'm so proud of everything that you've accomplished. It was such a pleasure and a joy working with you uh, back in 2018. Uh, congratulations um, to to you, Haley. And um, I'd, I'd also like to take this opportunity just to uh, acknowledge my mentors, without with, without whom I wouldn't have been here. I've been so humbled. Um, I've been I've I've had the opportunity to hear from so many former students over the past week or so, and you know uh, it's been a truly humbling experience for me. And what I will say is that I would not have been here where I am today had it not been for my mentors, and some of whom are are, are sitting here in the audience today. I'll start with Professor Hazeltine, after whom this award is named. Uh, you you truly have had the most impact. Uh, on, on my career, I would say. You're the one that encouraged me to start teaching. Uh, you're the one that gave me a chance. And I greatly do appreciate that. Nobody in the history of the university has probably had more of an impact or Brown or its students or its alumni than you, uh, Professor. Danny, I'd like to, like to also acknowledge you and thank you. I remember back in 2009, I was gonna say, when I, grad when I was graduating from Brown, I came to you and I, and I sat down and I said, Danny, I don't have a job. I don't know what to do when you laughed at me. And, uh, and I said, Danny, what's so funny? And you said to me, well, you're an entrepreneur. I said, what's that supposed to mean? And you said something to me that has stayed with me since then. And you said, Danny, you said an entrepreneur is somebody who, if they cannot find a job they want, they go out and they create it. And that's just what I did. And the credit for that goes to you. And since then you've been such a tremendous uh, pillar of support. So thank you, thank you, Danny. Um, my family is also here. Just a quick hello to my my parents, Farhana Ahmed Ansari in Karachi, uh, certainly who taught me everything to know about everything uh, in life. And my wife Amara sitting right here uh, next to me as well. So uh, I think I probably took more time than you had allocated for me, Danny. But thank you. No, no, no. It's it's um, it's so like you, Hamza, to acknowledge everybody else and to shine the spotlight on everybody else because you're so selfless about how you uh, provide value and mentor. Uh, the, the only thing I wanted to add was that it's poetic to me uh, and it's personal too, because as you said, you were my student back in 2008 and 2009. And I hope I laughed with you, not at you, but uh, 
but but I think the um, the main thing that's so wonderful and that Barrett has experienced so many times, even with me, when he tapped me on the shoulder and said, I'd love for you to come to Brown and teach. And I said, you've got to be kidding. You've got the wrong person. I've never taught anything, not even Sunday school. Uh, and so Barrett was an inspiration for me. He was an inspiration for you too. And it's such a wonderful thing to see the um, continuum come full circle where you as one of my former students, you as one of Barrett's former students, now are not only receiving this award to acknowledge all your generous mentorship, but you've joined the faculty at Brown and you're now a professor at Brown. And so uh, your reach, your impact is much broader and more formal than it's ever been before. So we couldn't, um, we couldn't thank you enough and we hope that it's just a gesture of thanks that you now have a bobblehead uh, depicting Barrett uh, to acknowledge your award. So what I'd like to do is encourage everybody to, um, if you have, raise a glass. It can be a glass with some brown related swag on it or whatever you like. And uh, we will toast uh, Hamza and uh, for his being awarded one of this year's awards, Hazeltine Mentorship Awards. Thank you so much, Hamza. And I'm now gonna turn the floor over to my colleague, Associate Director, Jonas Clark. Hey everyone, um, Jonas uh, here, Associate Director at the Center. And I have the privilege of introducing our next introducer, Sophie Stark, class of 2020. Um, and it's funny to think of her now as an alum, uh, not just a student, but um, as some of you know, uh, a student is, is sort of a misleading representation of all the things that Sophie uh, took on when she was on Brown's campus, particularly uh, all the things she did connected to entrepreneurship. Some of you um, may know that the Nelson Center is about to turn five this fall. September one is our uh, five-year uh, birthday. And so um, the first four years of the Nelson Center co uh, coincided with Sophie's um, first four years at Brown. And so uh, I was looking back and our team was talking about all of the, sort of looking back for five years and all of the things that we have sort of um, done and programs. And I was going down the list and literally almost every single one of them, I'm like, yep, Sophie ran that. Yep, Sophie started that. Uh, she helped. I remember the conversation we had where the idea for that came out of. Um, and so I just wanted to raise a couple of uh, highlights. Um, first of all, she was the co-president of EP, um, which, uh, you know, most of you know, almost all of you surely know, that is a no small task in and of itself. It's the largest student entrepreneurship group on campus. It's a big job. Um, one of the things that I admire most about that during the uh, her tenure as presidency um, is that they instituted um, a, a policy of uh, basically creating a pool of money to um, create stipends for folks in leadership positions in EP uh, to make sure that uh, basically any student that financial um, resources would not be a barrier to participation and to leadership participation in that group. It's been one of our most successful um, things on campus. And I remember that. I remember Sophie going to bat for that um, to make that happen. Um, she, um, Van Wickle Ventures, our student-run venture fund is her brainchild basically, um, which I think she's probably gonna tell you a little bit about in, in a minute um, as it relates to Troy. She's represented Brown um, entrepreneurship community at conferences. She was the TA for the first entrepreneurship practicum class, which is now the capstone to our certificate. You really go down the list and it's um, she's been involved in a incredibly positive, impactful way in almost everything um, entrepreneurship on campus in the last four years. So I can think of nobody better uh, to talk about um, one of our fantastic alumni entrepreneurs than, um, than Sophie. So with that, I will turn it over to you. Jonas, you're gonna leave me speechless, which is and not good timing um, to, to say a few words, um, but thank you for all of your support through, through all of the things you just listed um, and so many more. And I have to say, um, when kind of Liz and Jonas and Abby reached out to ask me to say a few words about Troy, I was so excited uh, because I've been putting his name down. I think every year I've known about this award. And so it's, it's high time. Um, and I actually remember when um, we were dreaming up Van Wickle Ventures, that the student run venture fund. And I, I said to Jonas, you know, we would need to find some pretty special alums if we're going to actually pull this off. Um, you know, first, they need to be top of their field. Uh, then they also need to be incredible teachers, which isn't the field they're in. 
Uh, and then lastly, they have to be willing to donate a significant amount of their precious time and expertise and energy on this totally unproven project that will most certainly not be smooth sailing uh, for the foreseeable future. And right away, uh, Jonah said to me, I have exactly the alum for you. You have to meet Troy, <laughs> which I, I did not think would happen so quickly. Um, but the, the next couple of years of working with him were everything Jonas promised uh, and more. You know, the job title of kind of BWV investment committee member is, is theoretically to provide feedback on investment opportunities. But Troy was as involved in helping us grow BWV as an organization uh, as he was instrumental in thinking through those decisions. And so, you know, he taught us tactical things like how to run a meeting and evaluate the success of pilots, as well as very strategic high level things like thinking through portfolio construction and building long term culture so that, you know, this could survive uh, past me now that I'm alone. And he really challenged us. I mean, I remember one thing Troy would always say is, you know, it's easy to say no, but it takes courage and conviction to say yes, uh, and really push us on building thoughtful theses around companies and spaces we were interested in, uh, and building our own unique vision of, of what did success look like to us uh, as student founders and work towards that. And really, I was reflecting on kind of all the conversations we've had, and the common thread is that Troy took us seriously as students, even if there was pretty much no basis for him to do so. And I can't even begin to express how powerful that attitude is. Um, it gave us space to form our own opinions, to be wrong, to get better, be a little bit more right next time. And I, I really think that attitude lies at the crux of, of why Troy deserves this award so much. It's, it's not just that he gives himself incredibly generously as a mentor, which is true, but it, it's the impact that he has. And I, um, I'd be remiss not to mention that it's not just the current students. So as uh, Jonas mentioned, I'm you know a year out of college now and Troy has continued to be a mentor who helps me navigate that first year, teaching me again, tactile things like what's affordable email uh, and very strategic things like how can you be a 22 year old in, in venture? And so I'm just incredibly thankful that I get to take this time and this space to thank him uh, for everything he's given me personally. And of course uh, the broader round entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, as well. So thank you, Troy. Well, thank you, Sophie. When I saw you uh, attending, I thought, oh, there's a chance. There's a chance she's going to get to introduce me because I, I love the relationship that we've built over the last few years. And um, I just want to talk for a few minutes about my experience at Brown and how things have changed. So I, I'm an entrepreneur and was an entrepreneur for many years before becoming an investor. And it, what's interesting is, unfortunately, I never took Barrett Hazeltine's class um, because I was an engineer and I looked at Engine 9 and I thought, oh, that's not a real engineering class. And I had enough engineering classes on my, on my, uh, on my transcript already. And I re obviously, at this point, I regret it. Part of the reason was I didn't know I was going to be an entrepreneur. The definition that was given earlier um, that Danny had said, an entrepreneur is someone who, when they cannot find a job, create it. That's how I became the accidental entrepreneur. I graduated from Brown. Nobody gave me a job that I was willing to take that I wanted. And so I created one and I created a company. And fun fact, Danny, at that point, I didn't know what the word entrepreneur meant. The first time somebody used it, I had to go figure out how to spell it and look it up in a paper dictionary. That's how old I am. So uh, true story. But anyway, um, but Brown gave me the tools to be able to figure out my own path. Right? I really believe that had I gone to a more conventional school where I took a conventional set of classes and this is what you have to do that would have been very rigid and structured, that I wouldn't have had the confidence to go out and try to figure out how do you start a company? How do you get customers? And be comfortable making those mistakes and be comfortable exploring this new space, which for me has been an amazing journey. Many of you may not know, but in that first company that I started right out of school, one of my business partners, was Danny Warshe, who uh, came out to Chicago and joined us and was an amazing partner and has been a, a great friend ever since. Um, and it was, it was a f number of years later that I got involved in helping others and in teaching. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention one more Brown alum, um, Barry Merkin, who uh, unfortunately isn't with us anymore. And um, Barry made such a difference he, he taught me how to be a teacher and he taught me how to help others. And I know Jessica knows him. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, 
uh, I usually don't get emotional like that, but but Barry had such a huge influence, and uh, he was a professor at Kellogg, and he brought me into teaching and had me had me help as a mentor there, and then got me teaching my own students and teaching at Northwestern and then at Kellogg, and just totally changed the trajectory of my life. Um, and then there's the Nelson Nelson Center, and what Danny has Danny and Jonas have built. Uh, you know, there was nothing like that when I was at Brown. There, there was no place you could go to learn about starting a company and, and have mentorship and people to ask questions and to explore this space. And, and Sophie, you said it so well, to give you space to make your own mistakes. I think it is so important that you have the ability to make mistakes and to learn from them. And then Bob, Bob Place has had a very critical, critical um, role in helping launch Van Wickle Ventures and helping fund it and run it. And I, you know, part of the reason that I've dedicated so much time to helping the students and being on the investment committee there is that I just wish in the worst way I had had that opportunity when I was at Brown. Um, the learning that's going on, the fact that they're actually making real investments in real companies with real dollars, hundreds of thousands of them, um, and the experience that they're getting is phenomenal to me. And uh, and I just love to see the trajectory and all of the things that, that, are, uh, that are there for the students. And um, so anyway, so thank you all. Um, I, uh, I do have to mention that some of my support network is here. So uh, those of you who, some of you I know know, um, my mom Arlene and her husband Phil Lieb who are in my left-hand corner waving, who uh, wouldn't have missed this for anything. Um, my wife, Kristen, who's hiding behind her name, but she's here. You can all wave at her as well. Um, and uh, it's just been a wonderful journey. And uh, thank you for this incredible honor. And the best part, for those of you who know me, is not just that it's a Barrett Hazel team bobblehead, but it's on a bicycle, because I am an avid cyclist. And uh, this is actually the only trophy I've ever gotten that has an actual bicycle on it, so uh, <laughs> or award. So I'm really excited about it. It it will have a great place. Thank you all. You know, Troy, I I did I, I did think of that when um, when when we were sending you that bobblehead on a bike. I thought of all the recipients who would appreciate <laughs> that most. It's got to be Troy, who you know lives in Evanston and bikes down along the lake to his office and in, in the loop and. Um, all over the place, and and even biked with his daughter to drop her at college in uh, Toronto, and and um, you know, so uh, I think I, I really appreciate the words you shared with us and the emotions behind uh, the words because I think both you and Hamza. I mean, I see Andrew Moses here now, and I remember Andrew has such a close connection to to Hamza. I think what you're speaking to is what I said before, but you said it so much more beautifully. And that is that this Nelson Center is a reflection of the broader entrepreneurial family that uh, Brown has produced through the years. And just like you, I didn't know the word entrepreneurship when I was a student. I just knew that I was drawn to it. And so much of that ties back as we all have acknowledged to bear himself. The only other thing I want to say about Troy and I hope it comes as high praise, which is that Troy is my teacher. He's my mentor. And I remember um, what a privilege it was. I didn't even realize it when I instinctively was drawn to team up with you and Ed and um, others at Specialized Systems in Chicago. And I think part of the reason I did was because from the moment I met you, it was so clear that you were such a talented teacher. And at that time, it wasn't in a formal classroom, but it's such a great thing that Northwestern identified that in you so that it could formalize your teaching. But I continue to draw on your own mentorship and your own teaching. You know that I've reached out to you to ask your advice about various things, including teaching, and that you've never hesitated for a moment to be helpful to me or to my students or to share information, whether you're doing it on your Math Ventures LinkedIn uh, or in all the uh, materials that you've shared and I've in turn shared with my students. So thank you so much, Troy, for uh, being my mentor and my teacher. Uh, you know, many of you know I'm Jewish and um, the first line in the first principle in the Talmud is find yourself a teacher. 
And I think that stems also to uh, find yourself a mentor. And uh, I think both Hamza and Troy and all the uh, awardees from the past uh, are such good examples of that principle. And again, uh, I know Troy, you give me and Jonas and Liz and Abby credit for uh, launching and running the center. We can't do anywhere close to what we do without the kind of engaged mentorship that all of you who are here today are doing. So I, I want to, first of all, encourage us all to raise a glass to toast Troy. And uh, I see Troy even has one with um, some brown logo swag on it. So really appreciate that. And then we're also going to do a, um, a, a screenshot so that we can have this for posterity. And Abby, do you want to help us organize that? Yeah. What would you like us to do? I'm going to add um, Barrett to the screen here. Um, and then Hamza, and we can get everyone in a picture. Three, two. Oh, get Barrett's got his hat on. <laughs> All right, everyone ready? Okay. Oh, he's putting his scarf on too. Must be cold here in Providence. <laughs> it must be cold. Or maybe at Lake George. Who knows where you are? <laughs> okay. Okay, I think I got it. Great. Awesome. So, um, Barrett, is there anything you'd like to say briefly to our recipients? A lot of, a lot of things to say, and a lot of them have been said already. And uh, it's just been a great pleasure working with Hamza, and it's been a great pleasure reading about Troy. And uh, I think it respects. Oh. Uh oh, Barrett, we suddenly can't hear you. I, you're not muted, but I'm wondering if there's something wrong with your microphone. Is that better? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. Okay. So you do you want to rewind 10 seconds? Okay. Okay. Uh, just want to congratulate uh, Troy for all he's done and uh, sort of Mr. Outside and Mr. Inside Hamza who has done a great deal uh, for many, many students. And uh, I also really have to congratulate Andy and Jonas and Abby and Liz for what they've done and putting us together. And thank you also Steve Siegel. So congratulations to all and thank you. Terrific. So, you know, um, we have a few minutes left and uh, I want to open the floor to see if anybody else would like to say something. Uh, people are not shy in our community, and I see some others smiling, and maybe they're about to unmute themselves. I'd say you'd be um, welcome to do that if you like. It doesn't have to be formal, doesn't have to be long, uh, but if you'd like to acknowledge Troy or Hamza or anybody else who's here today, uh, we could get a conversation started, and then uh, we'll see where it leads. Is there anybody else who would like to say something briefly? Don, I see you've unmuted yourself. So maybe that's an indication you'd like to say something. I met Hamza early on uh, in his uh, prime uh, career and um, uh, had the, had, was able to introduce him to someone that was, was instrumental in helping him move along. The thing that impressed me most about Hamza was his persistence. He was not going to let this thing go. <laughs> and, uh, and he, in spite of, you know, ups and downs and everything else, he, uh, in true entrepreneurial spirit, learned from his mistakes and uh, kept on plugging. Uh, and and as he as he got more successful uh, and finally found his his niche in his place, it's been really great to see him grow over these last ten years. So congratulations, Hamza. Thank you so much, Don. Thank you. And Don was one of our recipients last year. Uh, you're not wearing your your set. Was it seventy three brown jersey? Uh, but but, um, but 70, I, I trust you're wearing some form of swag. 73 number. Anyway. Right, 73 number. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> COVID's been a problem that way. <laughs> so 
So thank you, John, uh, Don, for uh, chiming in there. Is there anyone else who'd like to say something, even just a quick comment or quick whatever you like? It can be about anything, but it doesn't have to address Hamza and Troy, but it could if you like, or it could just be some anecdote. Steve, I think I see your... Uh, I'll, say, um, I'll say a quick hello. And since I think I've known Troy uh, the longest, except for his mother on this call, um, and uh, Troy and I go back even pre-Brown uh, to, to high school. And uh, one of the things I just want to say, is all, all great things and all, all the things people said, but one thing that's great about Troy too, and great about any mentor, is he's not just giving and teaching, he's also always learning. And he's learning from you, the students. So that's why he treats you like your ideas matter. And um, he's learning and then passing that learning on to the next folks he teaches as well. And I think that's another uh, asset and attribute of a great mentor. And it's something Troy's always done in the unbelievably 40 years that we've known each other. I don't feel old enough to know anybody for 40 years, but, uh, but it's, uh, it's an amazing thing. It's amazing to watch your traje trajectory uh, as you continue to learn and teach. And, uh, you know, I'm proud to know you and watch. Congratulations. Thank you, Steve. So Steve, I think you and Troy went to high school together. Is that right? Mm -hmm. how, how, how far back even before that? Yeah, high, high school and then roommates at Brown and then uh, cross paths, uh, lots of places uh, since then too. So. Terrific. Uh, let's see, others, if you'd like to either just unmute yourself. Jason Harry, you have something to say. Uh, just a very quick tribute to Hamza, who I've known in a variety of capacities uh, in the engineering department. Uh, when I came back uh, to Brown in a teaching capacity, Hamza was there uh, in, you know, probably safe to say a support role. Hamza, I, I don't know if that's uh, an accurate uh, portrayal of, of what you were doing at that time. But uh, boy, has he become a force in the entrepreneurship program in, at Brown, uh, not, not only at the Nelson Center, but also in the graduate program in engineering called Prime. Uh, he is a front bencher big time now as the, as the program is growing, and uh, he is an essential employee at every level. So I, I count myself very lucky to have him as a dear friend and close colleague. So congratulations, Hamza. Well deserved. Thank you so much for those very kind words, Jason. Uh, what I will say is that I learned so much from you, how to engage with students, how to teach with them, uh, how to encourage them to be the best. What I, I the, the, the master's class that you referred to that I teach, Engine 2160, there's absolutely no way I would have taught it had I not the opportunity to sit in your class <laughs> the semester prior to. And Amara knows this every time I prepare for a lecture, one of the things I'd say is, what would Jason Harry be doing? <laughs> oh my God. I to channel you in my, in, my, in my classes. So thank you for that. That's for that. a great honor. Thank you, Hamza. So let's see, Jessica, I think you flagged me and uh, we're looking to say something as well. Jessica Kim, also another past uh, awardee. Yes. I have to contain my feelings right now because I just, after this whole meeting, I'm just, so grateful and proud to be part of this community. Um, I'm sure we all feel that way. Uh, you know, as I reflect on, um, you know, Professor Hazeltine, you were the first to ever believe in me um, with the first business. And Troy, you, you know, when I was a new mom and I just had this baby and I was thinking about the next business, I was doubting myself in so many ways. And you were the first to say, yes, you could do it. And, you know, came up with designs with me. And I'm, there's, Oh, he's walking away. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, I'm getting your product. <laughs> Babaco. Um, yes, so many hours in your house with your family, and you just truly just embody um, even what, I don't know, beyond what we think of as a mentor. You are someone, is your friend. Um, you keep us accountable. You kept me accountable. Like you weren't just a cheerleader. You were always like, what are the numbers? The numbers don't tie, <laughs> do it again. 
Um, and you know, you've just had such an impact, not only on um, my businesses, but me as a person and in my life. And you give me parenting advice and you're just amazing. Um, so this is, it's, I'm so happy to see you celebrated and honored in this way. Um, and just this community, like I look at Liz Pamberg, she was one of my angel investors um, in my first business. And then through the, and now she's starting, um, you know, Can Do, which is incredible. And, um, and through the Brown Fund, you know, I was able to kind of invest in hers. And I think that's just like a, a beautiful circle of what this community is about that just keeps growing and makes me just so proud that it keeps evolving and growing and hearing the students talk is so impressive. <laughs> um, and so I'm just grateful and, and and my congratulations, Hamza, and congratulations, Troy. Um, it's an honor to be here to celebrate you guys. Thank you, Jess. It's great to see you. Jessica, let me just chime in and echo there. First of all, I still have the pot holder, the Jessica's Wonders pot holder. It's held up after all those years, but it really has, has come full circle. And Troy and I were actually classmates at Brown and then followed each other. Um, to Kellogg, although I think we may have missed by a year or so, but overlapped there a little bit. And then um, just to kind of bring it all full circle, he's been an amazing mentor to me. Um, I recently just did one of the Techstars programs and Troy is a superstar at Techstars and really just was totally giving. And so no matter, it doesn't matter, you know, how old or how long you've known someone, you know, as Steve said, there's always something to learn. And I just learned a, a tremendous amount from Troy even over the last year. And just, um, you know, it's a small world. This morning I was actually on a call giving advice and mentoring some Kellogg students and they mentioned how amazing Troy has been for them as well. So the world is small and it does go full circle and this community has been incredible and it's, it's wonderful to see how it's grown and, and how supportive it is. And the magic of, of what's happened here is something that Techstars refers to as give first. And give first is helping others with no specific expectation of return. It's not a transaction, it's just helping others. However, in the long run, it ends up coming back tenfold. And so while, yes, it's true that, you know, I helped Jessica with, with Babaco and, and I spent time with you, Liz, and, I, and Sophie, we've talked a, a number of times as you're going through your journey at Insight Ventures, and I have no specific expectation of any return, but I feel like I get much, much more back than I ever give. And it's part of it's the learning that Steve talked about, learning from all of you, then being able to share it with someone else. And the best, the most, the most rewarding part for me is when I see people I've helped, people like Jessica, for instance, who then go on to mentor and help others. And, you know, this all comes back up to, I know that, that uh, Professor Hazeltine was sort of the, the originator of all of this. He was the, the first one who was teaching entrepreneurship at Brown and who, who got that little taste. And again, I regret not having taken your course, but think of what you have propagated. Think of how many people are out there in the world helping other entrepreneurs because of the, the example that you set in Engine 9 and because of the things that you've put into place. And I just feel like this is a rising tide. It's gonna lift all boats and the world is a better place because of it. And so thank you, Professor Hazeltine for starting this entire journey for all of us. Very well said. Thank you, Troy. Well wanted, said. I just wanted to chime in also that it's been a, a real joy to work with Troy on Ben Wickle and to be involved with him both in the, the development of the curriculum and then all of the wisdom and guidance he's given to the students over the past several years. Troy, you really have stood tall and it's been awesome to be able to be working with you. Thank you. Hopefully I'm not too tough on them though. Mm -hmm. Some, sometimes they don't, they don't enjoy it in the moment, but. <laughs> Actually, I think that's the truest form of praise from them is that the students I know who've interacted with you have said, Troy's tough. Uh, but it's tough love. He, he really has only the best intentions in terms of what he wants us to learn. And so your style works well. I think people know that you hold them to high standards and um, you have high expectations. And I think the results speak for themselves. Thank you. Let's see, Ian, is that a, a hand? I see a hand. Is that, a, is that an, a, an expression of interest in saying something? Yeah. 
Yes. Please. Yes. Great. Uh, sorry for the the background noise. I just I just had to shout out um, Hamza. You know, I first met him in 2015 or excuse me, 2014. I was at a very uncertain place in my life, and he really helped convince me that you know Brown and a master's degree there was going to be the right move for me. And I'm so glad that he did. And then when trying to um, co-found the entrepreneurial journey is so hard, the ups the downs, and he was always there to on the downs to commiserate and uh, conspire to uh, do uh, some way to get, to get out of our situation and then to in inspire and strategize, you know, when we um, had a good moment and we're ready to really capitalize on it. Um, and he also, you know, for all of his amazing professional stuff, he was always um, so willing to join us in um, little pranks that we would play on um, some of our professors. So he has such a fun <laughs> um, and loving side. So I just had to, that had to be represented as well, not only your professional acumen, but the whole, the whole package. So congrats, Hamsa. Thank you, Ian. And I'm glad you stopped when you did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Hamza has family here. <laughs> but maybe that's part of it too, that entrepreneurship should be fun. It shouldn't only be serious and academic. So let's see, I'll just scan to see if there's anybody else. Anybody wants to say something? Now that Ian broke the ice, maybe we can really uh, reveal some things. But no, it, 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 it's nice and heartfelt for people to be able to express themselves here. Anything else, anybody else? Andrew. Hi there. Um, I just want to uh, congratulate Hamsa, um, as well as Dean Hazel team, uh, Danny as well. Uh, uh, I actually took the class and actually Troy too. I was overlapping with you back in the day, but I actually took the class with uh, Dean Hazeltine. And uh, it was a remarkable class with hundreds of students uh, in each semester. So to your point, the number of students over all these years who have gotten the benefit from Engine 9 is just remarkable. And it's radiated not only in the US, but it's radiated all over the world. Dean Hazeltine has been an incredible mentor to me. And he's introduced me to some extraordinary people who have gone through the Nelson Center program and I've actually hired, um, and it comes to mind of um, Ranak Masand and Anshu Arati and Julia Ritchie, who I think was a TA for you, Dean Hazeltine, and they introduced me to Hamsa, so for which I'm incredibly grateful. So as I hear the wonderful community, you know, recognizing the uh, extraordinary work of so many of you, um, you know, uh, you can see the benefit that that circulates over decades and how it grows and leverages and ultimately generates so much goodwill and uh, so much um, possibility, which not only changes the community of Brown and its alumni, its students and alumni, but then goes on to change the world. So Dean Hazel team, thank you so much. Hamsa, congratulations, Troy as well. Danny, remarkable work in all respects. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Um, I think that may be a good place to end, unless I see any other hand. Um, a really wonderful feeling I have in terms of what Troy just said about the ethos, the culture, what we're trying to espouse here. Uh, and so um, really appreciate all of you joining us today, uh, mentors in your own right, uh, past recipients, faculty, uh, supporters in all ways. Parents and family, of course, because we owe it to you um, that your uh, your sons and uh, other relatives are here with us. Um, the The last thing I'm going to say is, don't be a stranger, and we know you won't because you're so much a part of the fabric of what the Nelson Center represents, and that'll continue uh, unusually this summer because it is a, a a real semester this summer, and we will be having. Uh, programming in through the summer, B-Lab Accelerator included, of course, but not only. And so we hope you will stay attuned to the uh, social media announcements and to the email updates we'll be sending throughout the summer. And then fingers, lots of fingers, toes crossed that before we know it, we'll be able to welcome you back into the Nelson Center. I like to say we did a really bad job of designing the wonderful building to be conducive to a pandemic. Uh, and I hope very soon we won't have to worry about that. And we'll be able to lean on all the great qualities that center has to encourage very close collaborative um, work that entrepreneurs need to do.